Hello, I'm Dr. Peter Dubelay, uh, Professor of Radiology at Harvard Medical School and Senior Vice Chair of Radiology at the Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston. I'll be lecturing today on uh, fetal measurements, focusing on which are the important measurements to use and how to use them in obstetrical ultrasound. So there are uh, a number of uses of uh, obstetrical ultrasound measurements. The two main ones are to uh, determine the gestational age, which is used in order to estimate the due date of the pregnancy, and also to estimate it to estimate the fetal weight and the weight percentile. So those are, those are the main ones, but there are many others. And uh, those include diagnosing or contributing to the diagnosis of a number of conditions, uh, early pregnancy failure, fetal growth problems, and others as listed here. <laughs> so I'll be covering the first two items, determining gestational age and estimating fetal weight and weight percentile. And I'll talk about some, though not all, of the other uses listed on the bottom part of the uh, slide. Um, let me uh, address one thing before I uh, get into my own talk. Um, what, uh, what's in the uh, standard guidelines of a number of societies for uh, measurements in obstetrical ultrasound, and in particular, uh, the American Institute of Ultrasound and Medicine, the American College of Radiology, and the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology put out guidelines, and they keep them in sync with uh, one another. So what's in those guidelines? Um, in the listed in the guidelines, uh, in the first trimester, the guidelines of those societies state that the crown rump length should be recorded when possible which really means that the crown rump length should be measured and recorded um, as soon as the embryo is visible, which is at about six weeks. The mean sac diameter, they say, may be recorded when the embryo is not identified. And uh, the nuchal translucency should be measured in conjunction with serum biochemistry during a specific age interval for those patients desiring to assess their individual risk of aneuploidy. These are uh, di taken directly from the uh, guidelines of these uh, societies. So they're saying in this one that uh, the nuchal translucency is uh, to be measured Two important things. One is it should be measured in conjunction with uh, serum biochemistry, maternal serum blood tests, in other words, and that it should be used in those women who wish to know their individual risk of aneuploidy. That's what the guidelines say.